Okay, guys. Um, I have a lot of subject matter to go over. We're going to title this, Learn the Parable of the Fig Tree. Okay? Um, I'm going to show you some mysteries. I'm going to show you some uh, deep revelations and everything, guys. And I want to, um, I want to preface this message with a, with a couple things before we get into it. Um, first off, um, Daniel said in Daniel 12 that when these things, when the seal is released from these things, the, the wicked would not know, but the wise would understand, okay? Now, um, it's important that you understand that as I'm giving you this information, I'm following Daniel's pattern. And basically what Daniel is saying is when we begin to handle these holy things, you can see Daniel's reaction to the saints and the angels and the and, and Gabriel visiting him and all these things, they had a profound in, a impact on him. The presence of God impacted him from the angels, but also the magnitude of what he was experiencing from God's holiness affected him greatly. Okay, And so what's happening is his, the holiness surrounding God's end times and the coming of his son is, is things that must be handled without wickedness. Now Daniel gives us prayers. Daniel gives us songs. So we want to sing those guys. I sing those songs. I copy what he does. When he knew the day and the hour, he went and, and prayed and fasted for 21 days. He gives you his prayer in Daniel, um, I think it's 8 or 9, where he shows you how he prayed for the princes and the blindness and ignorance of over the people. No one knew what was going on. Guys, I'm doing the same thing. I spent a lot of time in prayer in this stuff and that's where, I'm, that's where I'm coming from with these things. I'm not just trying to throw out end time stuff to say how spiritual I am. I spent a lot of time on this to get the truth, to get this revelation. And the things that I'm finding is that most of what we've been taught is the mindset of man, and there's no revelation to it. But we can remove the wickedness in our own hearts that distorts us from understanding the truth by following Daniel. We sing his songs in uh, the second chapter. We can pray his prayers, okay? And then what will happen is the selfishness and wickedness in our own heart will not prohibit us from seeing the holiness of God's holy scriptures. And uh, we can see these things clearly, okay? So that's what I've had to do, to guys, to give you this information. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Because we are in the greatest time in human history, okay? And, and if you don't get that, you're just going to be led by the masses and completely blind and ignorant of everything that's going on, okay? But if you're wise, you'll take heed to this time and see what um, is available to us, see what, what uh, the scriptures talk about this time, guys, okay? So um, there are things in the scriptures, there's things in Daniel, there's things in Revelation that give us time. Now, Jesus said there, no one knows the day or the hour of his coming. But there are actually several comings or several things that take place, okay? So when the Son of Man comes in the clouds, he said that would come immediately after um, the sun being darkened and the moon not giving forth her light, okay? So we don't know the exact day or hour, but there are things we do know are actually calculated. And Daniel talks about those, okay? So when we consider, consider Daniel's 70th week, the number 62 relates to the Lord Jesus' first coming. And that goes to the exact day of Artaxerxes' decree up until 32 AD. Okay? Now, you connect that number 62 with the number 7. You multiply that 7 by 7 and 360 prophetic years. You go from that decree to Jesus' uh, crucifixion. Okay? So, obviously... The, there's an actual measurement of time. There's another one that um, deals with his coming. And that's what um, we went over before. And that comes up September 23rd, 2015. And that relates to Isaac Newton's interpretation of the seventh week. And that's seven times seven equals 49. 360 prophetic days within a year gets us to September 23rd from the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Okay, so what all these things are, guys, is they are plumb lines. So this is a, a plumb line, and it's a measurement, and what you need is you need for 
an event to take place. When the event takes place, then you know where it is. Let's say this is the event and this is the time. Then what you um, begin to understand is that from that point in measurement, everything takes place thereafter. Okay? So um, within Daniel's 70th week, there are actual measurements of specific days. Okay? So we know that 32 AD it was fulfilled to the day. Um, the Lord Jesus is, is second coming, the next two events, the seventh week and this one week, which is the tribulation, are actual days. Now, what you need is you need a trigger event to know when to measure and when to go. Now, again, we're not saying that this is when the rapture is going to take place. We're not saying that um, as it relates to uh, the Day of Atonement 2015. We know that around this time in the season, the Lord is coming, okay? And then there's another one, another plumb line, another one for the last week, and that's the seven-day tribulation. But it also has a trigger event, okay? Now, there is a calculation to show what that is. But what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to look at the parable of the fig tree as it relates to this trigger event, okay? And this is, now I can't actually get into the calculation as to determine when the tribulation will start yet, okay? But what we want to do is there are other witnesses to this same thing, the same calculation, the same thing, that there is some kind of trigger event, there's some kind of line in the sand, there's some kind of demarcation point that from that we can measure, okay? So we have Artaxerxes' decree and Jesus' first coming. Then we have... Um, the temple being rebuilt in Jerusalem, the Six-Day War, June 7th, 1967, bang, that brings us right to 2015. There's another one that takes place, and that's what we're going to get into, okay? But the thing that we have to understand, guys, is that when Jesus said, learn the parable of the fig tree, um, you know, I think what happens is we focus on the parable that he's speaking at that time. Now, the one I'm speaking of is in Matthew uh, 24. But what we'll see is there are actually five specific parables related to the fig tree. And we need all of them to paint this picture. So the first thing I want you to do is, um, you know, kind of put to the back burner any other interpretations of the fig tree you may have had. For example, they said that, you know, uh, in end times teaching, it is Israel. So when Israel's rebuilt, that's the generation, okay? Um, that's not the case, okay? Uh, it's much more sophisticated and much more elaborate um, in interpretation than that. And what we have to do is we have to look at all these other parables and how they tell the story. You know, if you follow this channel, we've gone over this many times of how we want the Holy Spirit to tell his own story through the scriptures and all the different witnesses. So what we're doing, guys, is we're talking about this trigger event and... Uh, and we're looking at it as it relates to the fig tree. We may get into the fig tree again later as the fig tree parable tells us about end times events. It covers many of them. But we're just going to cover this trigger event, this thing that will tell us when the tribulation starts. Okay? All right. So let's first look at the first. We're, I'm going to go through the five parables real quick. I'll give you the scriptures where they And you have to read all this stuff, guys. It's going to be very hard for you to understand by just watching this message and thinking you got it. No, I'm releasing mysteries, and it's beyond human understanding, okay? It's divine revelation. So the first one we have is in Matthew 24. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. So here Jesus is saying, learn the parable of the fig tree. But that's not necessarily just this parable. So we must learn all of them and to learn the story, to allow for it to tell its own story. That way I... We're not trying to make up our own interpretation. Well, it's this, and, da, 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 and it's just, you know, you know, revelation to the wind. We want to know the right, accurate interpretation. It went in, Now, let's watch what he says. Now, when its branch is ready to become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know now summer is near. Okay? So, within the parable of the fig tree, there's certain things we're going to point out. Now, the first one Jesus mentioned, we're going to focus on summer in this, in this theme. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so you also, when you see these things, know it is near, even at the doors, okay? Now, then he says, 
Heaven and earth will pass away. My words will by no means pass away. So Jesus is talking about the parable of the fig tree, and he's emphasizing the importance of it. All of heaven and earth will pass away, but my words. Now, the words that in the context of what he's saying, he's talking about the fig tree. So this is very important, guys. And uh, as you see, as we go through it, you'll be able to see that this is big. This, the fig tree encompasses all of it, uh, especially very, very clear. So that's our first parable that Jesus mentions. The second parable Jesus mentions is in Matthew 21. Now, these are not in any particular order, guys. Uh, you know, you can, you can, I'm not saying that it's one, two, three, and it's in this order, but these are the five, okay? And that is that the Lord, um, remember, he cursed the fig tree, and he said, you know, bear fruit no more, and the fig tree was withered, right? Okay? So that's the second one. The third one is in Luke um, 13, and that is... Um, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he, and he uh, planted a, a, um, a fig tree in a vineyard. And then he came back three years later looking for fruit. Okay? So that's our third one. Um, our fourth one, and this is where, it, this is really important, the fourth one is in Judges chapter 9. And in Judges chapter 9, it kind of gives us uh, a foundation for the the parable of the fig tree, if you were. Um, you know, it might also be called the, the parable of the trees, and that's true as well. Um, so that's our fourth parable of the fig tree. Our fifth parable of the fig tree is in Jeremiah chapter 24, and, it's in, and then there's two baskets of figs, okay? So we also do concern ourselves with this parable because they are all uh, creating a, a picture for us of um, time uh, measurement but more importantly guys what does the parable of the fig tree actually mean what is Jesus talking about why is this so important to him okay now let's first look at the parable of the fig tree as it relates to the trees okay and, and basically, Judges 9, you have the parable, and in the, in the parable um, is about trees, and, and uh, 9, 8 says, and the trees went forth to anoint a king over them. And so then there are different types of trees, and, and basically the, the trees are looking for a king. And they go to each one, and they go to the olive tree, and they say, you know, will you reign over us? Um, and all the tree is like, no, because I don't want to give up. Should I cease from giving my oil, which honor God and men, to promote trees or to reign over trees? So he says, no. The second one is the fig tree. And the fig tree says, come and, and they say, come and reign over us. But the fig tree said, should I cease my sweetness and my good fruit to go and promote trees? Um, or go over trees. Now the word in Hebrew, guys, for different whatever your translation is, if it's promote or sway, the word there is to shake. Okay? Should I go and shake trees? So what's happening is the trees, each tree knows that if it's anointed king, it is going to be shaken and its fruit is going to fall off early. Okay? So from the parable of the trees, or the, the parable of the fruit tree, as it relates to the trees, it's about anointing a king, guys. It's about the parable of the fig tree is about anointing a king. It's very important that we understand that, okay? So if we know that the parable is about anointing a king, then we can understand many of the other aspects, okay? So... Uh, then the next one is a vine, and the vine says the same thing. Should I give up bearing fruit so that um, I, I be king over trees? But it's all about a king, okay? And then the last one is, a, is a, a thorn bush, and that the thorn bush ends up being the one that reigns. So the trees are different kings, but the trees are trying to set up a king. So let's look at the parable of the fig tree as a seat or a throne 
and it's like the fig tree is the king. Okay? And then what we have is other things that, that Jesus mentions, right? We have leaves. We have types of fruit. Okay? We have timing. When is it? When is the, when is the timing of this thing? But what I, what I want you to consider is the parable of the fig tree is to anoint a king. All right. Now that we know that, we've established that, and go and read it for yourself, but I just want to point out that it's about anointing a king. All right? Now, when we go back to Jesus in the fig tree where he spoke to the fig tree, and he said, you know, bear fruit no more, right? This is a key right here, guys. What happened before that? He cleansed the temple. Let me say that again. Before he spoke to the fig tree, he cleansed the temple. All right? So in Matthew 21, um, that's where he goes, and he overthrows the tables and everything, and my house shall be called a house of prayer. And they were upset about this, and the children were singing, Hosanna, uh, son of David, and he, they, they said, stop doing that. And he said, no, the children will cry out. And, um, and then he left, and he went into Bethany and lodged there. And the next morning, he returned to the city, and he was hungry, and he saw a fig tree in the road, and he came to it and found nothing, and he said, let no fruit grow on you um, ever again. And then it, and it withered. Well, what is he doing? He's saying... No one can take this seat. No one can be anointed king until I come back. Anyone that tries to take this seat in this temple will be cursed. That's the parable of the fig tree. That's why he cursed the fig tree, guys. The fig tree represents anointing a king. He's saying no one can be anointed king until I do it. So I come back, okay? Now, why does this concern us about cleansing the temple? Well, let's get into the interpretation of that. Let's remember that the enemy is a counterfeit, okay? And so what the enemy is going to do is going to copy Jesus. He's going to copy the truth. Now, we're concerned with two adversaries in this case. There's the little horn, okay, and the little horn is like, um, in Daniel, leading the way to the Antichrist. He's not the Antichrist, he's leading the way, okay? But guys, it's very important that you understand that both the little horn and the Antichrist will do, they'll copy Jesus, they'll try to cleanse the temple, all right? Now, the little horn does this, okay, in Daniel 8. And so let's look at it. So in Daniel 8, it says, um, of one of them came forth a little horn. And then in 10, it said, it waxed seemingly great to the host of heaven and cast down some of the host. Okay? So let's remember that, um, that this is about kings or anointing kings. The little horn is preparing and casting down the host of heaven, preparing for the big horn, for the Antichrist. All right? Uh, uh, cast down some of the hosts and the stars to the ground and stamped on them. And he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. So, what's going to happen is, first off, there's the trigger event. This is it. Um, even to the hosts of heaven and cast down some of the hosts. So what he's going to do is, is he's going to cleanse the temple. He's copying Jesus. So where we find this is this is Revelation 6.13. The stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops forth its figs and is shaken by a mighty wind. Okay? So this event right here of the little horn is within the sixth seal of Revelation, guys. This is the trigger event. This is the next thing we're waiting for to give us the plumb line, to give us the measurement to the tribulation, okay? But it's important that we understand the parable of the fig tree to see how this happens, how this works, okay? So it's about, remember, it's about anointing a king. So he's preparing the way for a king. But what happens is he, um, you have this shaking, 
of the fig tree and the early figs. Now, there are other interpretations of that. I understand. If you have some other interpretations, that's fine. We have room for those. We're looking at this in light of the little horn and end times and the Antichrist, okay? All right. So, um, so what he does is he casts down the host of heaven preparing for the, the little, little figs will fall, and he's preparing for the Antichrist. Now, it's important we understand this, that by him the daily sacrifice is taken away. All right? So that's where he cleanses the temple. The little horn does. This is not the Antichrist. This is the little horn. Now, if we believe this to be Obama, which we do, uh, we believe he's going to do something at the time frame Jesus talked about with the fig tree. The summer is near. He said that. So what we believe is we believe that the, li the little horn will do this. This trigger event will happen in the summer. And we also believe that to be this summer, okay, because of the events taking place. We know that the Day of Atonement is coming up and all these things. But he also does some other things, and it's important that we realize what he does. He takes away the daily sacrifice. Now, the daily sacrifice, how do we know when that is? Well, that's what Jesus talked about with the three years. Okay, so what we have is we have the point that, that the, um, the hosts are cast down, okay, that's in the sixth seal, when the late figs are shaken by the mighty wind, and then he magnified himself to the prince of the host of so the daily sacrifice was taken away. He's cleansing the temple. Well, what is that? That's three years. So what happens is, is, is it's, it's as if he is trying to copy Jesus. He's planting the fig tree. The little horn is like planting the fig tree, and then three years later, he's going to take away the daily sacrifice. Okay? And uh, now if we believe that to be Obama, then... We know that he would go, he has to have another, a third term, um, or he might have some other role. He could, be, he could be the head of the UN or something like that because uh, the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of his, section, of his sanctuary was cast down. Um, and the host was given to him against the daily sacrifice. So what's happened is he's given, the little horn has given an army to take away the daily sacrifice. So guys, this is why the red heifer is so significant. When they start, um, they offer the red heifer, that's when the daily sacrifice will start, okay? And when it does, they'll, that's, it's already going down, guys. The tribulation would have already started. I mean, not, not at the time of the red heifer, but that it would, that would be going on until it, the daily sacrifice is taken away. When it's taken away, it's already in the tribulation period, okay? But we can see here, I'm trying to point to, uh, your attention to this plumb line, to this point, because when the hosts are cast down, we know that's in the sixth seal, okay? And that's what the sixth seal is, the stars of heaven falling, okay? It's like fig trees, so it's, it's a shaking that takes place that the little horn is going to do, okay? Now, let's see, what else do we want to, all right, so the other things we want to look at as it relates to this parable um, have to do with um, the leaves as well. So sometimes within this parable it talks forth, uh, it talks about the leaves and its timing. So there's different uh, times of the year that the figs um, would be harvested. There's an early time, which is like summer, and then there's a late time, which is in the fall. Some of them uh, there's many other times, but those are the two general um, time frames, okay? Uh, so, you know, so the leaves and, and have to do with timing, and, and well, when is this? And so, again, we are looking at um, the tender or early point of, um, uh, of the summer that Jesus talked about. That would be our first indication as to when the... Um, this shaking would take place. Okay, we're looking at in summer. And then, then the daily sacrifice would be taken away, not to the day, guys, mind you, but three years later. All right? So that's why this point of when he does this or this event is so critical. Um, now, I've gone and looked and done some calculations, and if we assume certain things, um, it's quite possible this event could take place on the 9th of Av. And we know the 9th of Av is a significant date in Jewish history because that's when the 
exact day the temple was destroyed, the first temple, the second temple, uh, many other events. If you look that up, you can uh, educate yourself on the ninth of Av. So that could be a cursed date when, the, uh, when this thing is started. And let's remember that when Jesus cleansed the temple, he talked about the fig tree. And that's about his seed, right? But then the Antichrist is going to do the same thing. He's also going to cleanse the temple. That's when the abomination of desolation is set up in the temple, okay? So, um, and what is he going to do? He's going to, they're going to anoint him as king. Do you guys see how important this is? So it's so important that you understand that Jesus cleanses the temple. And then he talks about the fig tree. He cursed it because he is the king. And the, and the parable of the fig tree is about anointing a king, okay? But the little horn and the Antichrist are going to copy him. Because in order to be anointed king, they would have to cleanse the temple, just like Jesus. I mean, this stuff is just absolutely wild, guys. But isn't that easy to understand? Now, if any of this is difficult for you to understand, go back over the video again and, and follow it, all right? But... Um, but here we can see now. I want to I want to say some other things too, um, because when he talked about when he cursed when Lord Jesus cursed the fig tree, I want to read also what he said about this, because um, the disciples asked him how the fig tree was withered away so soon. Jesus answered, said to them, Surely I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only um, do what was done to the fig tree, but you also say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Okay. And it will be done. Well, he's also giving us a time frame. Because that is the second trumpet. The second trumpet is a mountain coming down and being cast into the sea. But what Jesus is saying is that, look, that's also an event. That's an event. That's the second trumpet. But when it comes, I've given you faith. I've given you power. I've given you glory to speak to the mountain. So if, if there's an asteroid coming and it's directed toward the land that you're on, you can speak to the asteroid and say, go into the sea, don't hit the land. That's the kind of glory and time frame we're going to live in, guys, when these things happen. Okay? Because there are other things. Let me, let me mention this as well. Um, some of this will, I'll get into more detail in another video. I think I have to do too. But when Jesus plants the fig tree, guys, he plants the fig tree in, um, in Luke. And, and then he comes back three years later. So what I believe is that Jesus' public ministry um, was three and a half years. Okay, Now, three and a half is incomplete. It's half of a week. All right? And what I believe is that he's going to complete the other half, the other three years or three and a half years of his public ministry at, at his second coming. Now, the people that are going to do it are his called out ones, but they're, they're going to do it at a time of judgment, all right? So what I'm getting at is he's going to plant the fig tree again at or around the time judgment begins and the, and the uh, great multitude is here, but he's going to plant the fig tree and then when he does, he's going to see what type of figs the fig tree has, and then three years later, he's going to uh, come and take away the church. But if you look at Jeremiah 24, you'll see there's two types of figs. So what's going to happen is when he plants the fig tree, there's going to be two types of figs that come from the uh, that planting. Okay, And obviously, he's only going to take those that are good figs, and it talks about those. Okay. So that's one interpretation of the three years as well. The three years means more than one thing. But it also relates to cleansing of the temple, what the little horn is going to do. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to have more on this. I'm going to talk more about the little horn or this leading character for the Antichrist, guys, because no one has really taught us this. Most of the scriptures are lumped in as Antichrist, so it's kind of all him. But there's... You know, someone on the scene now that's fulfilling this role, okay? And so we're in America. You know, this is our president. So we we have to understand uh, the enemy, what he's doing. The scriptures have already talked about what he's going to do. Um, so it's un important that we understand what he's doing. It, he's doing specific things, and he's fulfilling scripture. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so to summarize, let's summarize. So we have five parables 
of the fig tree. Um, and obviously, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. He said that in light of the parable of the fig tree. Okay, now, when he's speaking of the parable of the fig tree, he's not only speaking of the words that he's speaking there, but there are five different parables that all are one parable of the fig tree. So what we need is we need the information from all five of those parables to under to learn the parable of the fig tree, right? The first one we consider um, as a foundation is that uh, Judges 9 talks about trees, anointing trees as a king, and they talk about a fig tree. Now they also talk about anointing the fig tree as a king to um, now, the, the fig tree would have to shake, and its figs would, it would have to, the fig tree would have to give up its fruit early to shake um, to, to cover the other trees, all right? So, that's where there's a shaking. So, the, you have the fig tree and you have the shaking. Now, we also can see that in, as it relates to the sixth seal, there, um, in Revelation 6, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops forth its figs, right? By a shaking of a mighty wind, all right? So, um, so that is a specific trigger event. That's a trigger event that we can find in Daniel chapter 8 as it relates to the little horn, okay? Now, we also look at the fig tree in light of what Jesus said. He first cleansed the temple. Then he spoke about the fig tree. And, the, and then he, also the fig tree is about anointing a king. He's the king. He has the seat. No one can take the seat. But the enemy is going to try to copy him. The enemy is going to try to cleanse the temple. The enemy is trying to take that seat. But Jesus said, cursed is anyone that takes that seat. Okay? And cursed is their fruit. Okay? So that's exactly what's going to happen. So the little horn is going to uh, shake, and that you have the shaking of the figs, okay? And the little horn is going to take away the daily sacrifice, okay? So you have that taking place in the summer. Jesus said, look at all the peril to fig tree when the leaves are tender for the summer. Um, so that's when we're looking for the little horn to, um, to do that with casting down the host of heaven, okay? Then, he's going to take away the daily sacrifice. He's going to cleanse the temple. Okay, that's the little horn. All right. Then, the big horn and the Antichrist is going to also cleanse the temple. <laughs> and that's when the abomination of desolation is set up. But again, the little horn is trying to prepare. The little horn is also magnifying himself, but he is anointing the king. He is, he is anointing the king as the king comes um, the false king comes of the Antichrist, okay? But it's important that we understand that the relationship of Jesus cleansing the temple before him cursing the fig tree, all right? So he cleansed the temple and prepared it for the fig tree. The fig tree is about anointing the king. He is the king. Anyone that tries to take, to be anointed king in that place is cursed. That's the parable of the fig tree, guys, when, the, when it withered away, all right? So that's what we're getting into at this time. There are other aspects of this I will share that um, are amazing as well. Um, but we're looking at this in light of an actual plumb line, an actual point, okay? So um, I'll have another part to this, and, um, and guys, Read all these scriptures. I don't have time to read all the scriptures. Um, there's a lot of verses here. I'm going to put them in the description. Read this parable of the fig tree, all five of them. Acquaint yourself with them. Look at the language. Um, get used to it. Now, many of the things I'm saying are avoid human understanding. But there's revelation, and we can see it by the Spirit of the God. What, what is uh, the revelation of what is in the, the, this picture? the parable of the fig tree, okay? So um, let's also be in prayer and, and realize that we're holding holy things and, and we don't want to, uh, you know, have wickedness in our heart and sin in our heart um, impact our, our ability to see. 
see the Lord clearly, see the scriptures clearly, see the day and hour that we live in clearly. We want to see clearly, guys. So that's why we have to be in prayer and fasting and seeking the Lord and looking at the scriptures and, and, and seeing, guys, this is amazing. Look at this day we live in. This is amazing. And if you don't take advantage of it, if you just look at what the devil is doing, I mean, you're just going to miss out on all these great things. So they're great blessings, and, uh, and we'll have some more on it. But guys, I just bless you. I thank you for watching. Um, I, I, I feel like this message is amazing, but I feel like nobody, I feel like a voice in the wilderness I might have, you know, just a handful of people watch this. But I feel like it's true, and I feel like this is the proper interpretation. Of, uh, of some of these great, marvelous things. So uh, learn the parable of the fig tree, guys. All right, bless you.